Yeah. Uh, okay, so your lead story in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter was about Royal Rumble. And uh, Royal Rumble is Saturday. Uh, I actually like the Saturday pay-per-views and especially like it this time because football is all day Sunday, so they don't have to go. Well, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, they, do we really want to go against the NFL playoffs with your with your second biggest show of the year? I mean, they have in the past, though. Like, it seemed like, you know, they didn't really care in the past, but now smartly, I think it's the right well, idea. It's, it's it's it used to be run by Vince McMahon, who had no awareness of anything but wrestling. Now you're you're being run by Nick Khan. You know, there's a you know, he he you know, that was a lot of his doing is, is moving a lot of the shows to Saturday nights, um, which, you know, sometimes they have there's always competition, you know, but. But uh, this weekend, it's it's yeah, Sunday would have been brutal on them. But no, but for the Rumble, that what they used to do is they used to run the week between the playoffs and the Super Bowl. So it'd be the first Sunday without football it used to be the Royal Rumble Sunday. So they didn't that the general rule was they didn't have that competition. Mm -hmm. There were there were years that they did, but that was the general thing. So yeah, I like um, I think I like Saturday better for a big show like Royal Rumble. But it's funny because as WCW, WWE has moved from Sunday to Saturday as much as possible, AW has moved from Saturday to Sunday as much as possible. And AW had, you know, I mean, we don't know if it's if it means anything in the sense of AW's numbers did grow more, you know, when they ran on Sundays as opposed to Saturdays, even though I know the people in the UK just absolutely hated it because, you know, Sunday night in the US is the middle of the night on Sunday and that's so the next day is a work day in the UK, whereas Saturday, you know, you've got the Sunday to rest it off, so to speak, if you stay up all night to watch a pay-per-view. So for the, you know, for the for Europe, you know, Saturday night is, is superior. Um, but AEW has had more success on Sundays, but they don't want to go Sunday during football season because for the reasons we just talked about, because uh, Tony Khan, um, you know, does live in more than just pro wrestling and kind of recognizes that you really don't want to go against the, uh, the NFL. Uh, th didn't Nick Khan have a statement about the crossover with pro wrestling and, and UFC recently yes. where he said the number was really small? Um, yeah, like I think he said 5% or something like that. I think maybe 10%. I mean, I, um, it's hard with WWE because, well, actually, well, it's impossible for me now because UFC's pay-per-views are ESPN Plus streaming. So I can't, I mean, there's no way to get those numbers. But um, I do remember um, like a John, you know, when I when I was able to get it, if you had like a fight with um, a major UFC, you know, with somebody who would draw, it was about a 10% crossover, you know, for, for that and, and, uh, pro wrestling wwe as far as the same viewers and and with lesnar it was much more than that but um you know the yeah generally speaking but i mean look look at the crossover from AEW and wwe that's it's not big either yeah yeah for sure but it just it just makes me wonder because i know in the past tony khan has tried to avoid ufc pay-per-view yeah. weekends and is that more so because of just the idea of the event going up against a big event? Or does that have something to do with he, he, he thinking that there is a crossover audience? Or well, a crossover audience. You know, you don't want to go against it as much as possible. I don't think that Tony Khan would be that concerned with a regular Saturday night fight night. But you don't want to go against a pay-per-view. That's, you know, because at that point, you're, you know, there's, there is going to be some crossover. I mean, even if it's even if it's 10 percent, you know, 10 percent is a big deal. Right. Yeah. OK, so uh, on Tuesday night, I was talking to my friend. Uh, I'll give him a quick shout out because he has a new podcast uh, on the Ringers uh, wrestling show feed, Ben Cruz. And he asked me for my podcast, the Fight Game podcast. He said, would you go all the way with Sami Zayn? And I said, you know what? If you ask me this question. Like a month ago, I would have said 100% no. Like it's just kind of like a little bit of a of, of a fluky thing. But I changed my mind. And in, a month ago, I would have said, it's got to be Cody. If it's not The Rock, it's got to be Cody. And then on, on Tuesday, I said, you know, I think it's yes. And then you and Brian talk, pretty much talked about the same thing on Wednesday. And then you wrote in The Observer today that uh, you would go 100% 100%. with Sami Zayn. 100%. I look at the... You know, I mean, 
you just it's the it's the most compelling story and the quarters tell the quarters tell you you know that that his segment you know they brought back all those hulk hogan and undertaker and all those guys legends and it was you know the trial of Sami Zayn and the tag match with the usos and Sami Zayn and jay after sammy got in the match not when jimmy was in the match or um and that was those were the high points of the show so to me you know i mean and that's when you've got like you know again they had that undertaker bray wyatt segment and they had rick flair on the show grand rick was late so he wasn't going to be in the high segment when you're that late but hogan was right there at the start and um so yeah it uh you know that and that's not just it it's just you know following things and it's just kind of like what's got the buzz what match is gonna you know is 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 the one that people want to see most and my intuition and everything says the match that people want to see most is roman and sammy and as far as what you do with it that depends on your long-term plans i mean um i think it'd be great if sammy won but um you know if he did you know i mean did you see the sammy thing with um with ariel Hawani today no okay he he was I mean, I only saw a little bit of it, but th- what I saw actually was about this thing. And Ariel just went to him and just goes, you know, like, uh, do you think that there's a chance that you could, you know, be, you know, um, be the face of the company is essentially what he said to be this, the face of the company because of all the momentum that you have. And he gave a great answer, which was basically, I don't know anything, um, but is it possible that I could beat Roman Reigns for the championship at WrestleMania and hold the title for a few months? And he said, yeah, it's possible. He goes, but, you know, it's like the champion is not the face of the company. The face of the company is very different. I mean, it's like, it's, it's like all the people who like when, when they went to Daniel Bryan or they Mm -hmm. went to um, Kofi and, and many other guys that they, that they went to at certain points to be the champion but at no point were any of them ever considered the star of the company because the company doesn't get behind people like that as stars. They do not believe those people can be the star of the company or one of the top stars. Of the, company. The, the, the I mean, they could be a, a star, but they cannot be the star, the face of the company like a Roman Reigns has been or John Cena has been. And he said, yeah, you know, I could win the title. I could hold it for a few months. But no, I mean, I'm realistic. I could never be that guy because – they are looking for something and I can look at myself and I'm not that guy. And I thought it was interesting because it, it's kind of like one of those things that, I mean, again, and you know, it's like, I cannot judge other people's emotions and everything, but you know, to me, there's always been a difference between the star and the champion. Now, usually the champion should be the star. Because if not, the championship is kind of secondary. If somebody else, like when, when, Hulk Hogan was not the champion in, in WWF and, and later in WCW, but he was still the star, the star. He was the, the real main event and the champion was the semi and that weakens the champion, you know, the championship. I've always thought that the, you know, you, you want to make the champion the top star. There's always going to be exceptions to that rule. Um, but, but I, as a general rule, I, I always think that you should do that. But like, sometimes like when people go like they're getting, you know, and I and it's good that WWE can pull this off, where people will go. They want to get behind someone. They have their reasons, and it's like they get those those uh, token championship wins. You know, the ones that really mean nothing. You know, I mean, they're just transitional guys. They're there to give the fans their their pop, but they the company absolutely is not changing their direction or anything. And the people think, oh my God, they got behind our guy, and it's like, but they really didn't. They handed you a belt for a couple months, but the belt was not meant to be the change you know even when when bill goldberg beat hogan immediately hulk hogan's all over the show and it's like i always thought that this was a this was actually part of and it wasn't a big part but it was part of the fall of wcw a very small part was people waited 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 they wanted sting to be the guy and they botched that that whole thing and then they lucked into bill bill comes in and um you know and and i you know again there's a lot of reasons bill got over and the streak was one of them and you know you know i told the story before i mean the the guy who deserves the credit for the streak was mike tenay i mean i can say that 100 percent because i was on the phone with him and we were researching that freaking thing together and it was you know all these people claim it was their idea and i can tell you 100 percent it was mike tenay's idea and mike tenay and bobby heenan pushed it pushed it pushed on the broadcast and it got over and then it started falling apart when they started lying about it okay but but it was still real 
when Bill beat Hogan. And I thought that what really hurt was Hogan was still the star of the company and Bill was secondary after Bill had won the title. And it was like people wanted, they really wanted that change in the company. They wanted that new top star, not, and they thought the title change meant the new top star. And then the title happened and everything was the same. And, you know, so, so to me, it's like the, the real title changes when you have, when you change the top star and that's a very different thing. And, and like, you know, Sammy's not going to be that guy, but yeah, Sammy could win the championship. I, I would even at this point, at this point, I would kind of go in that direction where he would win the championship. Um, but as far as making him the face of the company, can they do that? Um, they won't. I mean, um, you know, it's been abs- and, and and I've been absolutely told Vince McMahon and Paul Levesque do not see him as the face of the company. That doesn't mean he's not going to win the Rumble. Doesn't mean he's going to be even be in the Rumble. You know, I don't know what's going to happen on on tomorrow. But I do know that 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 was you know as far as like, and I think and and he basically said the same thing. It's it's not going to happen. And to me, that's like the big thing is is you know when are you going to change that face and who are you really getting behind? Um, Cody has a better shot at being that guy. But again, even if he wins the title. I don't know that it's a lock that that he would be put in the in the I mean, he might he's got a better chance of being put even with Roman Reigns because he does have the light, the right kind of look. And even though Sammy's actually a great talker, uh, Cody's Cody's I think in their minds, you know, Cody could go on talk shows, although Sammy Zayn actually said, you know, I could I could, you know, be champion. I could go on these talk shows and I could be funny and everything. I could do it. But but that kind of goes back to the corporate idea, right? With the whole Austin Vince thing. And in real life, Cody wears these great looking suits. He's uh, blonde hair, blue eyed. He well, it doesn't have to be blonde hair, but but no, but just that that classic pro wrestling look, right? Historically, everyone wants to be blonde and and blue eyed. (laughs) And and Sammy doesn't have that look. He 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 looks uh, different from that. And so it kind of is the, is this like corporate thing. Co- Cody looks a little bit more oh, like oh, the corporate oh. look that, that, that you would want. I just remember, you know, just as an example, and this wasn't the only time this happened, but when WrestleMania came to um, Santa Clara and punk was really hot at the time and, and Danielson was even hotter and they bring the guys they brought are, are John Cena, you know, Paul Levesque and Alberto Del Rio. And um, they brought, um, you know, Paul White and Mark Henry, you know, those were the guys that they, and there's, there may have been another, you know, I mean, Ron Killings and Fandango were there, I think, or one of them was. I know Fandango was there with Summer Rae because they, they did that uh, dance routine, but but that was just for comedy relief. And um, no, you know, who was there was also was um, freaking um, Sing, you know, oh, the yeah. idea, you know, um, um, great Kali. But that was like to, like, the media sees. Airport you know, tests. The airport test guys, right, right. Yeah, exactly. But the key was, is that, Alberto Del Rio was brought ahead of Daniel Bryan. And this is Daniel Bryan, you know, and, and CM Punk when, when, um, you know, they were, you know, much bigger stars at the time, but corporate wise, we want the, the good looking tall Mexican guy, you know, who can, who can uh, speak with that accent, you know, that's cool. And just normal looking guy airport test, right. Even if they're over, in the minds of the people making the decisions, oh, they're over to our audience, but they can't really be over. And and you know, I'm I, I you know I've always argued that you know the the test of who can get over is who gets over. Mm-hmm. In, you know, I mean, and it's like there is no set thing. Guys have gotten over and drawn big and big, giant, giant, giant mainstream stars in different parts of the world and country and everything like that. And they didn't necessarily have to fit into this, you know, Roman Reigns look. Nothing against Roman Reigns. You know, I think he's doing, I, I actually think Roman Reigns is doing a phenomenal job right now um, in his role. I think that, you know, that, that whole Roman Reigns, Sami Zayn, Paul Heyman, Jey Uso, you know, that, that's, I, I just think that that's really great television. Um, and I, 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 you know, and it's just on a, on a completely different tangent. When I watch Roman Reigns now, like, and again, the, the balloting's not for many, many months, but I've gone from Roman Reigns will probably get in to the hall of fame and he probably will and he should to this guy should be in i mean and he's not the only one but yeah. it's just like before it was it was like well look there's so many guys on the ballot that are 
that can get in first. And now I'm, and, and, and there's still a few that I might put ahead of him, but it's like, I'm way, when I look at him and see how he's performing now and, and how business is doing, you know, and he is still the top guy and business is great. And, you know, to me, that puts him above a lot of people that I would not have put him above, you know, six months ago, even. So John Quinn sent me an email and he wondered if the WWE or one of the hurdles in putting Sammy and making him champion, could the relationship with Saudi Arabia yes. hurt that? Yes, because Saudi Arabia would want the top guy and the champion. But um, John Cena didn't hasn't gone to Saudi Arabia lately, and, and he's a much bigger star than Sammy. So it's not um, – I mean, it's it's something, but it's not a death knell to him. But they're not going to make him the top guy. They could still make him the champion. Um, does Saudi Arabia play a part in the sense that they don't want him in Saudi Arabia and he doesn't want to go there anyway? And if he's the champion, they have that show coming up. Yes, it's absolutely a factor. And it's a, it's a really good point. Okay, and you also mentioned that uh, because of the news of, of Austin of late, uh, that him being in that match with Roman or winning the title or whatever would be a, a step backwards what, I think what, so. what was your reasoning for that? Because it's business is good. Why go to the past when for your main event when your main eventers that you have now are delivering? I mean, it's 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 not Austin's not Dwayne. You know, Dwayne is different. Dwayne is a completely different stratosphere. Dwayne will make it the biggest WrestleMania ever. I mean, he did with Cena, and he will now for one for a match with Roman Reigns. Austin, I mean, he did his comeback last year and it was really big. It's not going to be as big this year. If, if he wants to do it, of course you make a match for him, and that's fine. But I, you, there's there's main eventers that are really over right now, um, and WrestleMania is coming, um, and there's stories to tell. And Austin going in there to put over Roman Reigns, to me, number one, do people really want to see Austin go in there and lose? No. I do not. That's my big problem yeah. with this. and that's what yeah and that's what you have to do because he, he can't go on the road and, he, and even if you give him a fluke win what well, he's going to come back and lose it and um you know yeah i i, I am strongly i'm not you know i i would be i was i was very very surprised that it even was suggested and i've had people tell me that you know it's it's not happening but you know again everything changes and who the hell knows um but the fact that it was even suggested is basically, you know, my, my gut is, is is they're sitting there with the idea, you know, we really want rock. We really want rock. And then they got the, the I guess, the final message that, hey, it's not going to happen. And instead of going, hey, we've got, you know, WrestleMania is going to be success because it's WrestleMania anyway. We've got Sami Zayn. We got Drew. We got Cody Rhodes. Seth Rollins, you know, like. What are we going to, you know, we can, we can go with any of these guys and, you know, I mean, it's, it's some, some are better than others, but it's not like we're not going to draw and it's not like it's not going to do record numbers or anything like that. It's going to, um, so why, why put Austin in that spot? Austin's a special attraction. Put him in there in an eight minute brawl. If he wants to do something or even a 14 minute brawl, that's fine. If he gets, in, if he's in shape and, and he's up for it, but, but to take he's not Dwayne and to take the the main event spot of WrestleMania from from someone who might even deliver better and will deliver as well uh, I just strongly disagree with that like with Dwayne it's like no I mean granted no matter how good no matter how good this this storyline is or how much people want to see the Cody comeback story the fact is is will they get the the amount of interest um that Dwayne will bring to the show and the answer is no with Austin, will they? I think the answer is yes. So why go backwards? So that being said, do you do you still believe Austin's going to be a part of the show, or do you think that there's a good chance I he's going to be a part of the show? I don't know. I um, I mean, it was. I just know. I just know that the match they wanted was Lesnar, and that's not happening. And they threw this other one, but I don't. You know, I mean, as far as. I don't, I don't, I don't know that he won't be part of the show. I just, um, but I don't, I don't expect him in, I shouldn't even say that. I don't know. I don't know what the, what the situation is. I know that they're talking, so it can go either way. 
Yeah, I mean, just looking at who he could face, Seth Rollins was kind of a natural before they turned him babyface, though he's still kind of a dick as a babyface sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but, but they, they won't they won't put him against him right now because because of that. I um, mean, they could. It, it looks like theory, theory would be a good guy that Austin to, could could wrestle, but it looks like Theory's with Cena. I mean, you can move Logan Paul to Cena, and you can move Theory w- with Austin. You could. There's the the worry about Logan Paul is is that. Um, with Logan Paul, the feeling is is that you need lots and lots and lots of practice, and Cena doesn't have the time to do that practice. Where that Cena sense. can Cena can go with Theory, and you know they can do it, and and you know Theory's experienced enough, and and everything. They don't need lots and lots and lots of practice to to have a decent match. Uh, I mean, there's always you could bring back people in the past. The Andrew Zarian one is Goldberg, but that match would be really bad, I think. Goldberg, Goldberg and Austin. Austin. It'd be a big match. You know what I mean? It'd be a really big match. Um, Austin, you know, yeah, I don't know. Um, that would kind of be up to Austin. Um, but but that would actually be a really big match. You could do that one. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even, you know, Battle of Legends and everything. But yeah, I mean, we, we also saw Goldberg against Undertaker, and, and that wasn't pretty at all. Yeah, totally. Uh, you, you had a line about Cody Rhodes' training. Training like a boxer. What does that even mean? Just heavy, basically doing a boxing training camp to get into the best so shape possible. Lots of lots of running and I lots of running and lots of whatever they train boxers to do. Yeah, lots of cardio. When I heard it, it was kind of like, man, eh, maybe he's going to do forty minutes in the rumble or something. Um, which you know, first day back, man. That's but he's been in the ring. It's not like it's not like um, even though he hasn't done any matches and it is different. He's been in the ring doing ring stuff. So, so he's he's probably going to be leaner then if he's doing a lot of cardio. Yes. Well, I mean, he was 240 before he leaned up. So I don't know. I'm I'm sure he'll be I, I would I would suspect he's well under 240 right now. Yeah. But he was 240 not that long ago. I, I think it was just a month or so ago. I mean, because at, at the end, right before he got hurt, he was he was pretty big. He looked like uh he, he you know he's been a lot of lots of weight stuff. He'd been doing heavy weights, which ended up screwing him up. You know, that's, you know, he was doing heavy benches and, and, you know, real, you know, and, uh, that's what happened. Uh, and, uh, anything about surprises that you've heard? I've heard the name Riddle thrown out there. I mean, um, I mean, he's Riddle's out and, and, um, you know, I mean, in, in, in his, his six week so-called injury, uh, would, would be up right about now. So he could be, he could be back at, you know, if he was really suspended for a second time, he wouldn't make the cut. But, you know, they change the rules as they want. And and who knows what the story is, you know, I mean, with their rules now. But, yeah, I mean, Riddle return, sure. It's a, you know, I mean, it's certainly possible. And it's probably way too soon for anything with Randy Orton, right? Right. I don't know. I haven't heard his name. Um, you know, I know that they were very, very, very concerned. It's been months and months since he's been out. But it's been like I said, it's been months and months. Maybe, maybe he's, maybe he's ready. You know, Edge. Like he's, Edge was always supposed to be on the show with Balor, and they didn't do that. I don't know what happened there. You know, I mean, they were they were going to do that Hell in a Cell match with Edge and Balor on the show, and um, side against the angle was, was already shot. So um, maybe they're saving it for Mania, um, and they'll do an angle at the, in the Rumble. He can, yeah. He, I, I, there's no reason not. There's no reason not to be him, but to me, his first appearance back should be to try to get revenge on the guys who put him out mm-hmm. rather than go in the Royal Rumble as a surprise. But, you know, yeah. And I know Sami Zayn doesn't think this happens, but do you think there's going to be a crowd expectation for him to win the thing? And could that hurt the uh, the winner if, if it's not him? It's it's uh, possible, though, you know, they're hopefully they're smart enough. If, if um, you know, put it this way, if it comes down to uh, Sami Zayn and another baby face and they want the other baby face to win, that could be really bad. Um, I, f- be- I feel like if you have Roman or Solo be the reason if he's in the match be the reason for his elimination i think that that because of the storyline i think the heat would would be there for that and then 
the rest of that match. But I don't okay, think if it's not Sammy, then who's going to, I don't, I don't, I don't think you want that at the end though. I think you want that in, in the body of the match. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Because you don't want, I don't think you want the, the, the baby face. Cause it's probably a baby face winning with the heel champion, you know, even though the heels, the top baby face or one of the top baby faces, but the, I don't think you want a baby face to backdoor in, I think, you know, and, and, and fluke in. I think you want the baby face to win. Yes. So, so, um, yeah, as far as doing middle, yeah, if, if, if Sammy, good. if Sammy's in the match and they screw him, yes, of course, that makes all the sense in the world. Yes. You know, and, and doing well. And then, yeah, that would be heat. Sure. Here is some actual commentary from Bash and Booger. I love barbecue. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> During this match, uh, I believe uh, Bastion was uh, choking on his chicken wings. Bastion said, uh, Vince, you haven't lived up to your contract. I uh, require four or five pizzas delivered in a wheelbarrow. It was at this point that Bastion Burger demanded hot dogs. <laughs> were How they delivered it? in a wheelbarrow, too? Yeah. That's a big hot dog. We were told Razor and Zanetti have called. It's a big wiener. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Brian. Big juicy wiener. Yes, in between two buns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you broke Vinny. <laughs> If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.